by phone to discuss his proposal. Comptroller, thanks for your time tonight. Always good to be with you, Liz. So talk to me about the timing of this. This is not a surprise. You're actually fulfilling a campaign pledge, but why now? It's the start of a new session, and uh, I think everyone is looking for ways to strengthen the message on, on ethics uh, in government. And uh, as, as you mentioned uh, in the fall, I indicated that I thought it was time for us to deal with the issue of pension forfeiture. It's certainly an issue that's been out there and people have been talking about uh, how to address it. Uh, I thought it was uh, appropriate at the beginning of a new legislative session for, uh, for me as controller and trustee of the pension fund to uh, come up with a proposal that I would hope would get the serious consideration by the legislature and the governor. Because I was wondering if maybe you were spurred in some way by the death of sen former Senator Guy Valella, who of course pleaded guilty to corruption charge, and then uh, subsequently he was getting, um, he had to give up his seat, but he was still collecting his pension, and it was uh, not small, if I remember correctly. Yeah, no, it, it, it was not related to, to uh, any one uh, individual. You know, we all New Yorkers have seen too many instances of public officials who have used their office uh, to advance their own interests, uh, to be convicted of, uh, of a crime, and, and uh, very often the question is, uh, do they still collect a pension? Right. And, uh, you know, I, I think we've just had too many cases of, of too many public officials doing the wrong thing. We need to send out a strong message. We need to, uh, to try to get people to think twice before they'll, they'll, they'll be involved in this kind of official misconduct. And I think it is time to, uh, to deal with the issue of pension forfeiture, get it on the books. Well, yeah, uh, Guy Valella actually was collecting $75,000 in his annual pension. Your predecessor, Alan Hevesy, also pleaded guilty uh, to a corruption charge using state resources, he received $105,000. So we're not talking about a small amount of money here. The, the problem, though, is that constitutionally, pensions are protected, are they not? Well, and, and, and as you may have seen in the proposal, our proposal is prospective. Right. What we've, what we've also done, recognizing that, uh, again, we need to send a strong message about uh, official misconduct, we also have a second part of, of the proposal that, uh, that creates a, a, a new article in the penal code a code called abuse of public trust, which would provide for enhanced penalties for current uh, um, uh, public officials and, and public employees, for that matter. Uh, so we are trying to, uh, to address, strengthen sanctions for those who would uh, do something wrong today, uh, uh, even if they're in the system today, and, and certainly for, for uh, you know, trying to deal with the constitutional question. You do, what, what I don't want to do is propose something uh, that will not stand up to legal muster. So that's why right. it's a prospective bill in terms of the pension forfeiture part. Prospective meaning that going forward, if this bill were to pass, people who, and once it was signed into law by the governor, people who were then elected new officials would be Correct. subject to this. Prospective meaning people Correct. who are already in the system are not going to be subject to this. Also, we Correct. should remind viewers that if you're found guilty of a felony, you are you automatically lose your seat. So you get you don't get to be an elected official, but you still can continue to collect your pension. Correct. So let, let me ask: Do you have any sponsors for this? Because uh, Assemblyman Bob Riley had a bill. He's been reintroducing this bill for a number of years now, trying to deal with this issue, and it hasn't gone anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we just put the proposal out today, so I'm hoping that there will be interest uh, among a number of senators and assembly members. But we, we, you know, I don't know who's going to be uh, carrying the bill. Typically, when we propose a program bill, uh, the respective uh, uh, houses of the legislature determine who's going to carry uh, carry a specific proposal. Right, and we should. Uh, at, at one point, there were five states: Pennsylvania, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, and Massachusetts that had pension forfeiture statutes. So it's not exactly a new um, phenomenon. On. It's not like we're forging new territory here in terms of right. the legal challenges. Um, but do you expect that there would be legal challenges, even if it was something that did not apply to existing lawmakers? I, I think if it's, if it's prospective, I think that eliminates much of what has been the legal uh, issues that have been brought up in the past. And what about the governor? Have you broached this particular topic with the governor? No, but I, I certainly think the governor sent a very strong message on, on the need to strengthen our, our laws with regard to ethics. Uh, and I'm sure that, uh, you know, he's just in the first uh, couple of weeks of his administration. I'm sure that you, you will be seeing many uh, positive proposals in this area coming from him as well. I think this is an area where I would hope that uh, between all interested parties we could find common ground. I think what we're hearing from the public is enough is enough. We need to send a much stronger message. If you violate the public trust, especially if you're a public official, you should be held to a higher standard. 
standard if you're an elected official, and, and there needs to be a higher standard of sanction as well. You know, the legislative leaders and the governor are right now negotiating an ethics reform bill, and we're not getting too many details about that. We do think, we do hear that uh, legislators would have to disclose all of their outside income. Is that something that you support your former assemblyman yourself? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't have uh, a problem with that, and, you know, certainly uh, uh, from my point of view, that, that, that should be information that, uh, that people should, uh, should know about their elected officials. You know, I, I disclose my uh, tax return now that, uh, and have for the past uh, few years that I've been controller, so people can see very clearly uh, what income I have and where it comes from. Well, and even if a person is, is an attorney, that person should then reveal their clients? Yeah, I, I'm not an attorney, so I know there, there are probably some issues to be worked out there in, in terms of uh, attorney-client uh, relationships, but I think the more you, that can be disclosed, the better it is for everyone. Okay. I want to thank you very much, State Controller Tom DiNapoli. We're going to be hearing a lot from you next week, I think, uh, after the budget, so uh, Great. stay Look tuned. Great. Look forward to being in touch with you, Liz. Thanks. Be well.